Welcome friends, I'm Dr. Rajshri Namburipad and today's video is all about the hormones that control your weight and metabolism. Are you frustrated by your weight and do you feel like it's impossible to lose 5 pounds? Did you know that your appetite, metabolism, and weight are controlled by hormones? These hormones include leptin, insulin, ghrelin, and GLP-1. Your weight is also impacted by cortisol, your thyroid hormones, and excess estrogen can also make it hard to lose weight. I see patients every day who are battling their weight. They're miserable because they feel like they need to eat less and exercise more, but yet they're so hungry. Their uncontrolled appetite makes them think about food all the time, and this leads to hyperphagy, which means overeating. Is this due to a lack of willpower? Well, actually, it's due to hormonal imbalances that have hijacked the appetite control centers in their brain. I also see patients who actually do eat well and exercise regularly, but they feel like their weight is just stuck. You can calculate your body mass index to see if you're at a healthy weight. There are many online BMI calculators where you just enter your weight and height and they will calculate your BMI. A normal BMI is between 18.5 and 25. A BMI over 25 means you're overweight, and if it's over 30, it means you're obese. Sadly, obesity is a growing epidemic, and currently 42% of adults in the United States are obese. In today's video, I'm going to explain how you can shift your hormones and your weight through diet, lifestyle, and some key supplements. One of the key regulators of your appetite is a hormone called leptin, which is made by your fat cells, also known as adipocytes. Leptin is known as the satiety hormone, so it allows your fat cells to tell your brain that you're full so that you can stop eating. Leptin was actually first discovered in mice. So on the left, we have a normal mouse. On the right, we have a mouse with no leptin because of a mutation in their leptin gene. As a result, their brain perceives them as starving all the time. So they have an insatiable appetite and they become obese, weighing three times as much as a normal mouse. Normally, the more fat you carry, the higher your leptin levels. Then why do so many people struggle with hunger despite carrying excess fat? The answer is because their brain stops listening to leptin. We call this leptin resistance. In these cases, leptin is no longer effective as the satiety hormone because the brain is tuning it out. Leptin resistance usually coexists with another condition called insulin resistance. Insulin is the hormone made by your pancreas, and it tells your cells to take up blood sugar. Insulin is kind of like a key, but in order for insulin to work, you need to have insulin receptors that are open and receptive to insulin. However, if your insulin receptors are locked, then your pancreas responds by making even more insulin. This is called insulin resistance, and it's the physiology that can lead to type 2 diabetes. Having high levels of insulin is a problem because it promotes hunger, fat storage, weight gain, and inflammation. Unfortunately, insulin resistance creates a vicious cycle. The high levels of insulin make you hungry, but then it also tells your cells to store the calories as fat. A few hours later, your blood sugar drops, so you feel hungry and crave more food, specifically carbohydrates, which perpetuates the cycle of insulin release. To end this vicious cycle, we need to activate your insulin receptors. Remember, if your insulin receptors are locked, your pancreas responds by making more insulin. By activating an enzyme called AMP kinase, we can unlock your insulin receptors, and your pancreas will respond by reducing production of insulin. To learn more about insulin resistance, please check out my video which I'll link in the description below. The other problem is that high levels of insulin and leptin cause inflammation. This can cause a lot of aches and pains throughout the body. The inflammation can also accelerate the aging process, and we call this inflammaging. So in order to lose weight, we need to lower your insulin and leptin levels. Next, we have ghrelin, the hunger hormone. 
Your ghrelin levels increase right before a meal, making you really hungry. Ghrelin is made by the cells in your stomach, and it tells the hypothalamus in your brain that you're hungry. In fact, studies have shown that people given injections of ghrelin become voraciously hungry, and they eat much more at a buffet than they normally would. Ghrelin also works on the reward centers in the brain to produce dopamine, the happy brain neurotransmitter. This is why food is associated with reward and happiness. Ghrelin also works to promote gastric emptying and motility in the intestines. The cells in your stomach that produce ghrelin have circadian clocks that synchronize the anticipation of food. This is why it's best to eat meals at regular times during the day and to avoid snacking. That's because if you constantly snack throughout the day, ghrelin secretion will not be well controlled. So reducing ghrelin levels is a target for weight loss. And stay tuned because later in this video, I'm going to present a natural supplement that has been proven in clinical studies to reduce ghrelin levels. Let's summarize the three hormones we've talked about so far. Ghrelin is made by your stomach cells and it tells your brain that you're hungry. Insulin is made by the beta cells in your pancreas and it also tells your brain that you're hungry. On the other hand, Leptin is made by your adipocytes or fat cells and it's supposed to tell your brain that you're full. The problem is that many people suffer from leptin resistance so their brain is ignoring the signals from leptin. Now let's move on and talk about the next hormone called glucagon-like peptide 1 also known as GLP-1. GLP-1 is made by the cells in your intestines and it works directly on your brain to reduce appetite. It tells your pancreas to increase insulin release, and it also improves insulin sensitivity at the receptor level. Finally, it reduces gastric emptying so you feel full longer. This helps to improve satiety and reduce the amount of food intake. So overall, GLP-1 is a very helpful hormone to facilitate weight loss. This is why GLP-1 agonists like Ozempic have become really popular medications for weight loss. These are injectable medications that used to be used for diabetes, but are now also used for weight loss. The downside of these medications are the side effects, primarily on the GI tract, causing nausea and constipation. What about more serious side effects? A study published from France this year shows that long-term use, like one to three years of use, is associated with an increased risk of all thyroid cancers, as well as medullary thyroid cancer. Additionally, the risk of pancreatitis as well as pancreatic cancer is still being looked at in clinical studies. The good news is you can increase your GLP-1 levels naturally by increasing fiber intake in your diet. This means increasing your intake of vegetables, leafy greens, low glycemic index fruit, and nuts and seeds. There's also a natural supplement that has been proven to increase GLP-1 in clinical studies, helping with weight loss with no adverse effects, so stay tuned. Now let's shift gears and talk about a hormone that can make you gain weight. It's called cortisol, and it's also known as the stress hormone made by your adrenal glands. If you're under chronic stress, or if you're sleep deprived, your cortisol levels will be high. High cortisol is a problem because it increases hormones like ghrelin and insulin which make you hungry. People often turn to food when they're under chronic stress, and on top of that the higher insulin levels tell your cells to store the calories as fat. If your cortisol is high, you might find it hard to fall asleep at night, and this could lead to late night snacking which is the worst thing for your metabolism. Your thyroid gland is a butterfly-shaped gland in your neck that also strongly influences your weight and metabolism. Your thyroid gland is actually controlled by your brain, which makes thyroid-stimulating hormone, or TSH, which tells your thyroid to make thyroid hormones. Your thyroid first makes T4, which has to be converted to T3, which is the active form of thyroid hormone. Through a feedback loop mechanism, your brain is able to sense the amount of thyroid hormones being produced. If you're under chronic stress and your cortisol levels are high, T4 gets converted through an alternative pathway to reverse T3, which unfortunately is inactive in the body. This is another reason why chronic stress can take a toll on your metabolism. 
In women, there's a condition called estrogen dominance that can also be a cause for weight gain, particularly in the breasts, hips, and thighs. Women with estrogen dominance often have a pear-shaped body habitus, and it's caused by high levels of estrogen, which is not balanced by progesterone. In addition to the weight gain, it can cause a wide variety of symptoms. And to learn more about estrogen dominance, please check out my video, which I'll link below. When it comes to diet and weight loss, there are so many different contradicting philosophies. So what's the real secret to weight loss? To successfully lose weight and keep it off, we have to correct your hormones. We need to reverse leptin resistance by reducing your leptin levels. We also want to reverse insulin resistance by lowering your insulin levels. We also need to get ghrelin under control, which is your hunger hormone, and it's important to manage stress to lower your cortisol levels. We want to increase GLP-1 because it promotes satiety and helps with weight loss. And we want to activate AMP kinase on your cells, which is the enzyme that controls your metabolism. Now, if you're counting calories and wondering why it's so difficult to lose weight, that's because not all calories are equal. The foods on the left are very low in fiber whereas the foods on the right are high in fiber. It turns out that fiber makes all the difference when it comes to your metabolism. That's because fiber changes your gut microbiome. When you eat foods high in fiber, like a salad, it feeds the good bacteria in your gut microbiome, and they turn it into short-chain fatty acids, which are postbiotics. It turns out that postbiotics play a big role in shifting the hormones that control your metabolism. Having more robust postbiotics is a good thing because it helps lower leptin and insulin levels, lower ghrelin levels, increase GLP-1, and activate AMP kinase on your cells. This is exactly what you want to lose weight and keep it off. Now I'm going to review my top 5 tips for how you can make these changes in your hormones through diet and lifestyle. The first step is to stabilize your blood sugar. I recommend having meals that are really balanced and have protein, fat, and fiber at every meal. You want to cut out refined sugar and grains, which include bread, rice, pasta, and cereals, because these foods really perpetuate the cycle of hunger by spiking insulin and ghrelin levels. The paleo or clean keto diet are excellent for weight loss, and they also help to lower inflammation in the body. To learn more about the clean keto diet, please check out my video, which I'll link in the description below. Tip number two is to increase vegetables in your diet. Vegetables are very anti-inflammatory and alkaline on the body. They'll also feed the good bacteria in your gut microbiome to produce more postbiotics. The fiber in vegetables also increases GLP-1, which improves satiety and helps with weight loss. Try to eat a pound of vegetables a day, and it's actually very doable if you have vegetables at every meal. You can prepare the vegetables in any form you enjoy, so it could be in a salad, it could be sautéed, roasted, steamed, or even in a smoothie. What's fascinating is as you make these changes in your diet, it's actually going to shift your brain. You'll notice that your palate and taste buds will change. Foods that you previously ate may seem excessively sweet or salty. Your cravings for sugar will also go down, and you'll be able to satisfy your sweet tooth with healthy options like fruit. As you nourish your body with these nutrient-dense foods, your appetite will self-regulate. Tip number three is to activate autophagy. Autophagy means self-eating, and it happens when you're fasting. It's a great way to clean up the garbage in your cells, and it helps to lower inflammation and to lower your insulin levels. An easy way to activate autophagy is to do intermittent fasting. This is where you eat two meals within an 8-hour window, and you fast for the other 16 hours of the day. To learn more about autophagy, please check out my video, which I'll link in the description below. Tip number four is exercise. To lose weight, I recommend 30 to 45 minutes of cardiovascular exercise every day to activate the AMP kinase on your cells, which boosts your metabolism. 
You can choose any exercise you enjoy as long as it raises your heart rate, and even brisk walking counts. I also recommend strength training at least three times a week because the more muscle you have, the better your metabolism. Now you might be wondering, what about supplements? Great question, that's tip number five. Metabolism support is a powerful blend of plant polyphenols that help to turn on your metabolic switch. It's a patented formula containing the antioxidants from lemon verbena, hibiscus flower, and green coffee bean. It contains no caffeine or stimulants, and it has been research proven in randomized control trials to promote healthy weight loss, lower body fat percentage, and lower waist circumference. Metabolism support works through three proven biochemical mechanisms. First, it turns on AMP kinase on your cells to activate your metabolism. Second, it increases GLP-1, which helps improve your satiety. Third, it reduces ghrelin, so it puts the brakes on your hunger so that you're satisfied with a smaller portion of food. Metabolism support is best taken two capsules about 30 minutes before your largest meal with a glass of water. Combined with diet and exercise, it can be an added bonus to boost your metabolism and also help to control your appetite. Research also shows that it has additional metabolic benefits in lowering blood pressure, lowering LDL cholesterol, and improving fatty liver disease. The other great news is in clinical studies, it has been well tolerated with no adverse side effects. Next, we have Berberine Pro. Berberine comes from the root of the berberine plant, and it works to activate your insulin receptors. It also contains alpha-lipoic acid, a powerful antioxidant that activates AMP kinase. Berberine is also very anti-inflammatory, and it has antimicrobial benefits, helping to kill bad bacteria and yeast like candida in the gut microbiome. Cinnamon and chromium is another great supplement for blood sugar control. It also contains alpha-lipoic acid, and it works to activate AMP kinase and open up your insulin receptors. I always recommend methyl B complex, which is the big stress and energy vitamin. It also helps to improve your mood, and it lowers carb and sugar cravings. Vitamin D3 with K2 is the superstar vitamin because it helps with so many aspects of your health, including your hormones and metabolism. I always recommend omega-3 fish oil because it has essential fatty acids that help to reduce inflammation. Our fish oil is made from anchovies. It's third-party tested to ensure there's no mercury and it has no fishy burp. Next, I recommend magnesium, which is the miracle mineral for your cells. It promotes liver detox pathways, helps with muscle recovery, improves your sleep quality, and also helps to move your bowels. Finally, we have to optimize your gut health. This is why I recommend taking a high quality probiotic, like our Probiotic 100 billion or our Probiotic 225 billion. Remember how important fiber is for your microbiome? You can supplement with additional prebiotic fiber, which is a resistant starch blend made from green banana flour. This will help feed all the good bacteria in your gut microbiome to make more postbiotics. It'll also help keep you full and stabilize your blood sugar. Now let me present a case example of one of my patients named Lauren. Lauren is a 42-year-old woman who had been battling her weight for years. When I first met Lauren, she was 5 foot 6 inches tall and weighed 205 pounds. Her BMI was 33, meaning she was obese. Although Lauren exercised quite a bit, she really struggled with her diet which included a lot of sugary treats as well as some fast food. She had a lot of stress in her life and would go to bed late after midnight. This was a clue that her cortisol was likely high. Her labs showed that her fasting insulin was high at 25 because an ideal fasting insulin is 6. This meant she suffered from insulin resistance, which meant she also likely suffered from leptin resistance. Her vitamin D level was also very low at 13. Lauren was frustrated because despite exercising over an hour a day, she couldn't lose weight. That's because you can't exercise your way out of a bad diet. The other big problem was her hormones. She had insulin resistance, which means she also likely had leptin resistance. 
Her cortisol levels were high from stress, and her ghrelin was uncontrolled, making her hungry all the time. Finally, because her diet was low in fiber, she likely had a lower level of GLP-1. And remember, GLP-1 helps with satiety. So how did I help Lauren? Well, first, I helped her switch over to a paleo diet, which was much higher in fiber and vegetables. This helped to stabilize her blood sugar and start shifting her hormones. We helped to reduce her stress levels by incorporating meditation and some calmer exercises like walking, yoga, and Pilates to help lower her cortisol levels. I also encouraged her to go to bed by 10 p.m. every night. Finally, I started Lauren on some key supplements to help shift her hormones. This included metabolism support, berberine pro, methyl B complex, and vitamin D. When I saw Lauren four months later, I was absolutely amazed because she looked like a different person. She lost over 30 pounds and now weighed 170 pounds and her BMI improved to 27. She lost so many inches off her waistline and told me she wasn't even hungry anymore. This is probably because we changed her hormones. Her fasting insulin was now down to 6, which was perfect. By reversing her insulin resistance, it's a clue that we likely also corrected a lot of her other hormones controlling her weight and metabolism. Her vitamin D level was now optimized to 78 and she felt amazing. She had a lot more energy and no longer had any pain in her joints. So here are the key points. We can reset your hunger hormones by avoiding refined sugar and grains and by increasing vegetables in your diet because the fiber from vegetables changes your gut microbiome, which influences your hormones. It's best to avoid snacking and consider intermittent fasting to activate autophagy. It's important to address stress because chronic stress raises your cortisol, which can make it harder to lose weight. Regular exercise and quality sleep can really impact your hormones. Finally, there's some natural supplements like metabolism support and Berberine Pro that can also help shift your hormones and help with weight loss. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I look forward to hearing from you, so please post your questions and comments below. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.